Okay, and so public opinion, or uh, public opinion in mass media, let's start with public opinion. First of all, uh, as the first slide points out, the popular, usually when we say public opinion, we mean basically public consensus, the most common belief shared by the most people. If we say public opinion favors this, public opinion is against this, we just mean most people seem to feel this way. The technical definition, the way that we use this in political science or in, in the study of politics is, as the, the definition there, the distribution of the population's belief about politi politics and policy issues, the distribution of it across different demographic areas. So Public opinion in this sense is not so much just saying what does the majority think, it's saying how, you know, how are opinions broken up uh, uh, in, in different groups, I mean by, by race, by gender, by uh, economic uh, wealth, by, by education, and so on. So you try to see, you know, how do people in, in these different groups think? Again, the, the distribution of beliefs, not just what does the majority think about, say, gun control, but what do different groups think? Well, you know, how, how, you know, what, what, how are, there's a basic idea of, you know, the, the majority favors this type of gun control, the majority is against this type of gun control, but what are the views among men, among women, among different races, among different, ed, uh, different levels of education, different levels of income? So, it's the attempt to actually sort of be more scientific and more precise. How do people how do people feel about this? So demography, what is that? The science of population changes, and there's a little bit there about how demography has changed. There's been a population shift from the northeast to the west and south, and of course the population as a whole is getting older. Uh, this is of course we've all I assume we've all heard about this with regard to social security. That's where it's a big issue. Uh, in 1940, there were 42 workers paying into social security for every retiree. Today there only three. So obviously there are more and more people drawing on Social Security and fewer people paying into it. Uh, but but anyways, polling is of course the, the especially relevant thing here in American politics and political science. You often see polls, and again, it, it can be, you know, who do you think you'll vote for in this election? But th these these polls are off, also often broken down. Uh, you know, who, who, do, who do you think you'll vote for in this election? You know, this is how men answer. This is how women answer. This is how white people answer. This is how blacks answer. This is how Hispanics answer. This is how people in this part of the country answer, this is how people in this other part of the country, and so on, and that's that's where you get more precise with this stuff. So polling, of course, is just the idea you ask people questions, you get the answers, and you report them. Now, how do we know that this is accurate? It's not like they're calling everybody in the country. They call a relatively small number of people. How does that work? Well, you take a sample, and that's a relatively small portion of people uh, who are chosen in a survey, and they're representative of, of the whole, okay? Now, how do we know that this sample is accurate? There's the technique of random sampling. This is what's key. It's not actually the size of the sample. The sample has to be big enough to actually be representative, but it, it's still overall, it's very small. It's not like you have to poll half the country to get an accurate sample. It's a tiny percentage of the population as a whole, but if you use random sampling, if you make sure that the way that you take these, the, the, the way that you choose this sample is truly random, and therefore everybody has an equal chance of being representative or being represented, then a relatively small sample can actually provide you with an accurate uh, provide you with accurate polling data. An example of this, or an example of, of how this doesn't work, in 1936 there was a magazine called Literary Digest. Uh, and and they, they, they ran a poll and they had a huge sample. They used almost a million people in their sample. And they predicted a huge victory for Alf Landon. Okay, now may, many of you may be thinking, well, I, I'm never, not sure if I've ever heard of the Literary Digest, not sure if I've ever heard of Alf Landon, President Alf Landon. Of course, he didn't win in 1936. Franklin, Franklin Roosevelt was re-elected. Literary Digest, again, they had a huge sample size, but what ended up happening was they, they, and, and they, they had this prediction that Alf Landon was going to beat Franklin Roosevelt. And of course, it didn't happen, but they, and this was still in the early days of polling, people didn't fully understand how to do it, so they had a huge polling size. It was almost a million people, but the way that they got these people people's information was what they called them. And the way that they got their phone numbers was either from phone books, and in 1936, having a phone was still relatively rare. So that right there meant that it wasn't really representative. And the other way they got it was through, uh, uh, you know, the DMV, through, through registration of automobiles. And of course, in 1936, automobiles were still very rare, and they were very much a luxury. So although this, this magazine, Literary Digest, surveyed a million people, they were disproportionately wealthy. And, and then, as now, wealthy people are more likely to be Republican. So although they had this huge survey, what they had was a huge survey which, which disproportionately represented Republicans. There were far more Republicans in this survey of a million people than there were in the population as a whole because of the way that they chose their sample. And so as a result, the sample was, was, was skewed, it was inaccurate, and the poll was inaccurate, of course, which is wrong. So they predicted Alf Landon would win, 
Instead, Franklin Delano Roosevelt won this magazine, Literary Digest, had staked so much of the reputation on this that they actually went out of business after this because they were considered unreliable because they they made this bold prediction and it didn't pan out. So again, the key is not the size of the sample. In, in this case, the sample was huge. The key is the technique of random sampling, making sure that you really are choosing people at random and therefore you're getting an accurate representation or an accurate cross-section of the population as a whole. And if you do that, you can have a relatively small sample and still have very accurate polling. But now even the most accurate poll has a sampling error or a margin of error. This is a lot of times you'll see the poll, they'll say, uh, who, who, who are you going to vote for? And they'll say, uh, if they say, uh, you know, candidate A, 56%, candidate B, uh, 44%, then it's pretty clear. And then they'll say margin of error plus or minus three points. Well, in that case, it doesn't actually matter. Even if candidate A only gets 53% of the vote instead of 56, candidate A will still win because even the most precise polls always have a margin of error. So they can't be absolutely exactly precise all the time. So there's a margin of error, usually only two or three percentage points, that basically says, well, the poll may be off. So if it's something like 56 to uh, 44, then it doesn't really matter because, and this is the day before the election, then basically that doesn't make a lot of difference because the, the, the even even with a three three percentage point margin of error, it, it doesn't matter. The, the candidate A will still win whether he gets fifty three percent of the vote or fifty six percent of the vote. If they say it's fifty fifty, well, first of all, they don't, they're, they're obviously not able to predict it very well. But if they say it's fifty one forty nine, then although they're predicting candidate A, that's within the margin of error. So it could end up being 51-49 or 51, 49 in favor of candidate A, or it, can, it could end up being 51-49 for candidate B. These are both within the margin of error. So every poll has a small margin of error, two or three points. If the poll is close enough that, 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 that it's within the margin of error, then it, it can't really predict with, with, with much uh, confidence or certainty. Okay, but again, the, the key to conducting a, a, an accurate uh, public opinion poll is the technique of random sampling. It's, it's the technique that you use, it's not, the sole, it's, it's not the size of the poll, it's using the right technique so that you actually do get an accurate uh, sample that, that, that reflects the population as a whole.